All right, we're going to get going with some news you can use. We're going to do a rapid fire news you can use tonight. I've got um, half a dozen topics here I'm going to cover, just tidbits of news, but uh, some things to think about. First of all, the jobs report for August came out nationally yesterday. And there was a big disappointment. They had predicted that 628,000 jobs would be filled during the month of August. And in fact, only 374,000 were filled. This is the largest that they've ever been off on an estimate. I mean, you got to figure this estimate was revised as recently as like the 20th of August. And they were off by almost double. Uh, that has just never happened. One of the big reasons they believe is because of the federal unemployment rules, which is topic number two, FUI, F-U-I, Federal Unemployment Insurance, related to COVID ends Monday, um, at the close of business Monday. So depending on, once again, whose numbers you believe, there's anywhere between 6 and 12 million people who are currently receiving COVID federal relief money. Uh, through the Unemployment Insurance Division of the federal government. That ceases on Monday. Uh, number three, California did pass. We talked about this a uh, week and a half ago. We did pass uh, at the state Senate level and the, the legislature, the local house, the single family house ban. Uh, California has one more uh, thing we've got to do. It's got to get our governor to sign it. But assuming he does, it will be illegal to build a single family house in California. You'll have to build a duplex or larger. You won't be able to get a permit for a single family house. And we've talked about that on a previous episode. You can go in and look at the archives and, uh, and learn about that if you wanna see uh, how that's gonna be a disaster for us out here in California. It's gonna drive uh, values of bigger houses down dramatically. And it's going to upend a lot of neighborhoods and uh, the accommodations that are that come with those neighborhoods. Uh, number four, uh, recent large national uh, commercial agents, uh, commercial brokerage, uh, a common name you guys will all know about or have heard about, have now estimated that due to COVID, there's a seven-year supply of office space available. The normal parity for the office space market is between a three and six month supply. Previous to COVID, it had been about three and a half to four months. Um, and that, that is a normal supply. That's about parity. When you get to six months, that's a dead even supply. That's about how long it takes to build an office, uh, a normal office, smaller office buildings. Now there's a seven year supply. So obviously, needless to say, uh, office space is at a an excess here in the United States, and it will be for at least seven years. So if anybody wants to rent office space, now's the time to go out and get yourself a heck of a deal. Number five on our hit list today, New York State of has extended the eviction moratorium for the state of New York residences to January 15th, 2022. It's the longest extension. Uh, once again, uh, as has been the case, there has been no nod of the hat, no tippy, no help for the landlords. They've just basically said, landlords, you've got to uh, not evict folks who've had some nexus with COVID. Doesn't mean they actually have to have had it. They just have to say that it affected their income. Um, and there's no proof. It's just a certification. But if you do that in the state of New York, you don't have to pay uh, any rent and you don't, uh, you don't get evicted until at least the 16th of January, 2022. So there may be some other states that take advantage of, of that loophole now that the federal government's national moratorium on evictions has expired, actually it's been turned over by the Supreme Court. States can still weigh in and do their own thing. You may see a state or two here or there that will also extend it. I don't think California will extend it. Uh, just because, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of money that flows from the landlord associations into the coffers in Sacramento. And I think they're putting a lot of pressure on the legislatures not to make uh, free housing available at the behest of the landlords. Finally, the last thing we're going to go through tonight, and it's a teaser for next week, we're going to talk about the wildfire situation in California. It's a little bit different topic, but 
the wildfire has an effect on your business. And it's a, it's a ripple down effect because the wildfires affect the availability of water and the availability of water affects not only housing, but commercial development, commercial properties um, out here, at least in the, in the fire zone here in California, where we are. We're gonna talk about that and how that does have a direct effect on uh, prices of houses and uh, so on and so forth. So we'll talk about that next week. Anyway, that's news you can use for today.